Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews. I'm your host, Matt Spies, and today we are doing a special ranking video of the top 10 Hammer film productions. Now these are going to be Hammer horror films, and they will be from the era of the late 50s into the late 70s. And they were doing other films in between this period. Don't get me wrong, they weren't just a horror company. Um, they did some uh, Sherlock Holmes films, which were really good. They did some um, pirate films that were really good. And uh, they did Robin Hood films, which were pretty good. But I will not be including any of them on this. this I am only going with the horror films. So, if you'd like to see me continue to do stuff like this, uh, uh, please say so in the comments below, and do not forget to like, share, and subscribe, because it really does help the channel out a lot. Before I get into the top 10 list, I'm going to do a few honorable mentions and one dishonorable mention. These are not in any particular order. But these are films that were good, except for the dishonorable one that I will mention, uh, that, you know, that, that they, they just weren't good enough to be in my top ten. So, beginning this with The Horror of Frankenstein, 1970. Um, this film was a black comedy kind of. Um, film that was sort of based on um, the curse of Frankenstein, the, the first of the uh, Peter Cushing Frankenstein films. And it was sort of like a, a, a remake of that, but with a different actor. It didn't have Peter Cushing in it at all. Um, and it, was, it was well done, and it was well acted. Um, I actually... Uh, kind of liked it. It's just, like I said, it's not as good as uh, my actual top ten. It didn't It didn't make the tier for that. Um, but it's not a bad film. Um, and then next, uh, The Vampire Lovers from 1970 again. Um, th this film is, uh, it's, it's good. Uh, it's just just a little bit too uh, uh, weird for me. I mean, Ingrid Pitt is hot in the in the uh, in the film and all, but I mean, it, it has hardly anything else other than that. And, and the acting in it is not really the best acting. It's it's probably one of the more campy of the uh, Hammer films, so that's why it doesn't make my top ten. Um, Dracula A.D. 1972. That film um, is is a really good one, um, and it of course has uh, Caroline Monroe in it, and she's she's gorgeous. Um, she doesn't play a major character in it, but uh, but I mean, and it's always great to see Christopher Lee facing off with Peter Cushing as uh, Von Helsing. Um, but uh, it just. Uh, Moving it to modern days was, was just, uh, especially modern day, the 70s, um, was just a little bit too weird. I mean, they, they threw in all the disco and all that, um, all those little references, and it was just too, too freaky of, of a uh, film. Because um, Dracula and, and uh, Van Helsing just do not fit in, in those settings. Um, so, it's a good film, but doesn't make my top ten. Um, Phantom of the Opera, from 1962, um, which starred Herbert Lom, and I love Herbert Lom, and I think he would have made a great Phantom of the Opera, but what brings this film down and doesn't make it uh, able to make my top ten is... <sighs> The reveal in the end that he is not even a bad guy. He's just been living um, underneath the opera house. Um, 
I mean, he's he's not out for revenge against the sleazy uh, opera house owner played awesomely by uh, Michael Goff. Um, he's he's just <sighs> the real killings that happen in the in the film are not even done by him. They're done by this mute guy that lives down there in the uh, underneath the uh, opera house with him. So. Um, it was a waste of a great actor with uh, Herbert Long, but he his performance was still good. It's just it's it's just weird uh, doing that with the Phantom character. Then uh, we have uh, Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter from 1974. Um, this is another one with uh, Caroline Monroe. If you if you're a big fan of Caroline Monroe, I'm sorry that uh, none of uh, her films in the Hammer films made it into. Uh, the top ten. Sorry, um, Captain Kronos was was a pretty neat premise, and uh, I swear I think it might have inspired um, the Japanese animation film um, Vampire Hunter D. Um, I don't know for sure, but it, you know, there's there's definitely a few things that are really similar between those those two. Uh, things but uh what brings this one down is the uh the, the villains are not uh not very uh good um they're not very strong villains the last of the of the uh, honorable mentions would be um dracula has risen from the grave from 1968 uh this film has uh, veronica carlson with uh um christopher lee and uh, this is the one where I uh, mistakenly thought Andrew Keir was, was in it, um, but it wasn't. Um, that was uh, Rupert Davies was uh, playing this character in this one, um, which I mistakenly, because um, they're both really good actors, um, and they were both playing priest characters. So I, uh, in my review for uh, Dracula, Prince of Darkness, I uh, mistakenly said that I thought Andrew Keir played another character in a later film. He didn't. Um, that was Rupert Davies in this one. But this one's not a bad film, um, but it's, it's just... Uh, <sighs> bringing... Dracula back from that um, frozen ending at, at the end of uh, Prince of Darkness. I mean, uh, the, the way they did in this one, it was just very universal. And uh, it just didn't fit in with the Hammer style at all to me. So, um, and while we're on Veronica Carlson, we'll get into my dishonorable mention. And that is Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed. Uh, this film started out really good. Um, and Peter Cushing was, was great in his portrayal all the way up until this one point where, for whatever stupid reason, the producers decided to write in um, a rape scene where Peter Cushing's Dr. Frankenstein rapes Veronica Carlson's character. And that just... No. That just brought the film down for me. And, and uh, you know, I can't, I can't put that in any of my top rankings because of that. That was a distasteful scene and it was just horrible. So, getting into my top ten. Starting with number ten. Curse of the Werewolf, from 1961. Uh, this film stars Oliver Reed, Yvonne Romain, and it is lower on my list. It's, a, it's still a damn good film, but it is lower on my list because all promotional material for this film uh, showed Oliver Reed and Yvonne Romain. Together, working together and acting with each other. So you would be shocked to know that in the final film, Yvonne Romaine plays Oliver Reed's character's mother.
and she dies giving childbirth. So her character is not even in the movie whenever Oliver Reed's in it and starts turning into a werewolf and doesn't he? I mean, the, the character playing uh, Catherine, um, she is not even as attractive as Yvonne Romaine. You should have flipped those roles. Um, so th this one's brought down just because of that fact. I mean, all the promotional material showed him and Yvonne Romaine and him holding her in his arms and everything like she was going to be the big main girl of the story. Um, just like in, in the uh, original Wolfman um, with Lon Chaney Jr. But it just it just uh, it, it falls flat because of uh, that. Other than that, it's it's a, it's it was a damn good werewolf film for uh, Hammer. It's a shame they only did one. Coming in at number nine, we have. The Kiss of the Vampire from 1963. This film is, it doesn't have really a big cast, a, you know, of, of well-known names. It's, it's more, um, it was originally supposed to have been a Christopher Lee Dracula movie, but they changed it and, and took out all the Dracula elements and made it a standalone vampire film. And, uh, but it has a nice little premise because, you know, the, the vampire takes the wife of the main character as they move into this town and basically makes her completely forget that she's married to him. And basically he, oh, the vampire owns the, the whole town anyway. So he, he makes everybody think this guy's delusional and doesn't, you know, his wife never existed he never had a wife. And uh, that is a cool little element to a, uh, a Hammer film that was never there before. So it's a really good um, thing in a vampire film. Um, so that's what made it unique and made it different. Even though it had no real name stars in it, it, it was a really good story. It would have been interesting to see what it would have been like if it would have been Christopher Lee's Dracula in that story, though. And it probably would have been higher on the list if they did do Dracula in that plot line. Coming in at number eight is Frankenstein Created Woman from 1967. And this one, I did not think I was going to enjoy it. It is something where, you know, Peter Cushing's Frankenstein is experimenting a little bit more, a little different than he was in the previous Frankenstein films. He takes the soul of this boy who was executed and transfers his soul into the boy's girlfriend who committed suicide after she found out that he, uh, he was dead. And from then on, it's a revenge film where the female starts being controlled by the soul of her boyfriend to get revenge on those who caused his execution, which was a really good little plot line in there. Um, and the uh, actress playing um, the Frankenstein monster, you you know, and everything, she's very attractive and was a really good actress. I thought she did a good job in this film. And of course, Peter Cushing is Frankenstein. Um, is always great, except for in uh, Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed. So, and coming in at number seven, we have Horror of Dracula from 1958. This is the first film in which Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing play Dracula and Van Helsing. And it is has Michael Goff in it, so it has a really good co-star in there. He's and he's really good in it, but it just doesn't have that cool sensuality that Christopher Lee's Dracula has in the later films. So that's what brings it down a little bit for me. I mean, he is not as seductive 
um, in this one. In fact, uh, when he goes after Michael Goff's wife, I believe her, they, they didn't use the name Mia, I don't think, in this, but I uh, can't remember her name. But he goes after her and he just bites her off screen. We don't see the seduction of her where he turned her against uh, Van Helsing and uh, Michael Goff's character. It's just, you know, she's she's just got bite marks on her. She's hiding them. And, uh, you know, it, it's just uh, that it loses a little bit of the sensuality. They have a character playing Jonathan Harker. And uh, he goes to stake Dracula near the midway point of uh, the film and ends up getting stopped and gets bit and turned into a vampire. It's just like, you took your main hero of the Bram Stoker's books and you just had him get offed and turned into a vampire right at the you know, midway point of the movie. Why? That kind of always angered me with this film. So, um, number six, we have Lust for a Vampire from 1971. This, this, I mean, this film was such a sexy and uh, sensual vampire film. It's, it's one of the most, uh, you know, because uh, one of the lead vampires in it is, is this uh, uh, Carmilla. Um, and she is just so sexy that whenever she does the seduction scenes with the, with the other females in the film, it's got that lesbian <laughs> overtones to it that it's just, ah, it's really hot. So, um, this one is a really, um, really sexy, hot, um, hammer film. And, and usually they don't, they don't get this sensual, but this one was really that way. And, uh, that's what brings it up on my list as far as, um, cause we didn't get a lot of those. So it's unique in that respect. Um, and the acting is really good in it too. So... Coming in at number five, rounding it, in, we're getting into the top five of them, and uh, that is Dracula, Prince of Darkness from 1966. Um, I don't think I have to say too much more about this one. I've already reviewed it in my review. If, you, if you've not seen it, um, go to my review. But this film is, to me, the top Um Dracula film from Christopher Lee. And as I said before, uh, Andrew Keir makes a really good replacement for Peter Cushing in this film. And of course, Barbara Shelley and, and Suzanne Farmer, I mean, they're just such great leading ladies next to Christopher Lee. Coming in at number four is The Mummy from 1959. This mummy film kind of takes a little bit of the mummy's hand plotline from the uh, Universal days and uh, puts that in there for its own little take on the mummy. Christopher Lee plays an excellent mummy in this. I mean, he's got the stature. He's a, he's a big guy. So him playing this uh, mummy, he is a huge mountain of a mummy and he really looks intimidating in there and Peter Cushing playing the lead uh character in here is just awesome as usual it's just great uh those two together in anything that they did so yeah that's uh, that, that is just a it's an amazing film there's not much more I can say about this one <laughs> if you haven't seen it definitely need to see it Coming in at number three, rounding out our, coming into the top three, number three is 
Rasputin, the Mad Monk, from 1966. As I did with uh, Dracula, Prince of Darkness, I already reviewed this film, so there's not really much more I can say about it. If you have not seen it, see it. It is a great Hammer film. Christopher Lee gives one of his best performances in this thing. Again, he's working with Barbara Shelley and, and Suzanne Farmer, and those two are really great in this. Suzanne Farmer is less as good in this one as she was in uh, Dracula, Prince of Darkness, but the whole way that um, Rasputin makes uh, Barbara Shelley's character um, help him to get get into the uh, good graces of this arena is such a great little plot point and everything that I, it just makes it work really well. Now, coming in to our top two. Number two is The Curse of Frankenstein, 1957. The Curse of Frankenstein stars, you guessed it, Peter Cushing, and Christopher Lee, once again. And, um, this one, Lee is not as strong in it because he's playing the monster. But yes, he, he still, as you know, because of his physical stature, he is a hulking and badass-looking Frankenstein's monster. But, the real star of this movie is Peter Cushing. And he, this is one of... Peter Cushing's greatest portrayals ever in any film. He was great in this film. And uh, the, if you have not seen Curse of Frankenstein, see it. It is a really good Frankenstein film. It is totally different in the way that he creates the Frankenstein monster than anything Universal ever did. They really distanced themselves from Universal in this one, whereas the mummy kind of doubled down on doing the mummy's hand style of the mummy. But this one is very unique and very cool. I love this film. Best Frankenstein film by a long shot here. Now, Number one, the number one film, and any of you who have uh, seen my reviews in the past know that since it hasn't been mentioned yet, you know what this one's going to be. Number one is The Devil Rides Out from 1968. As I said in my review of this film, I mean, this... <laughs> This film is the coup de grace of Hammer Films productions. It is, it is the best film they ever produced. I mean, they started doing these newer, you know, newer films um, in uh, around the late '50s, around '57, um, '56, '57, and. Uh, it wasn't until here in 68 when they did this one that they really went to the point where you can't top this one. I mean, th this was great. One of the best films ever out of, out of this era. I absolutely love this film. Performances from Christopher Lee, Charles Gray, and... All the rest of the supporting cast, I mean, they all do an amazing job in this film. Sarah Lawson, especially, uh, in that scene that I've already showed in my review. If you haven't seen it, go, go see my review for, for that. But, yeah, uh, this is the film. So, hope you've enjoyed my ranking of the top Hammer Film Productions. If you, uh, again, if you uh, agree with my list or if you have your own list, um, let's see them down in the comments below. Um, let me know what your top ten are. Um, and if, 
and why you uh, disagree with my list, you know, or if you agree with my list, you know, let me know. Um, but, and if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, if you like these uh, kind of, you know, these, these top tens um, rankings, if you'd like to see me do more of these, let me know. And uh, we'll do it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Later.